Hello pre-calculus students and welcome to a video on the definitions of the conics. So we're going to look at the definitions, the formal definitions of these four, um, and uh, there's many ways to think of a conic, like for example, we already know we can think of the conics as slices of a cone, which is where they get their name. We can think of them um, from the general equation of conics, which we've worked with and allows us to graph them, but we can also think of them based on their definitions, and that's what these diagrams are here to kind of help you understand the definitions. And we're just really surveying this. We're not going to go into the um, all the math behind this. There's a lot that can be done with these, but we're just going to, I just want to give you an idea of what each of these um, is defined as. So the parabola, first, the parabola is defined as the set of points that are, are the same distance from a point as they are to a line. Okay, the point is called the focus, the line is called the directrix. So you can look at an example of three points that are highlighted here or shown. I could pick, I could do this for any point and I'll add one more before we're done. Okay. So if you take this point, for example, the distance from that point to the focus equals the distance from that point to the line. If you take this point, same distance from the focus to the line. If you even take the vertex, if the, the vertex should always be halfway between the focus and the line, and this one is. Take a point way up here, and even if you take a point way up here, and I, I were to draw the distance to the directrix straight down here, and then draw the distance to the focus straight here, those two lengths should be equal. And as long as this is truly a parabola, then that will be the case for every single point on the parabola. Okay, so I could even put like one, two, three, four marks there, like that. Okay, that's a parabola. A circle, probably the, the one that's easiest to understand, um, this D does not stand for diameter, it stands for distance. I would prefer to think of this as the radius because then you're really looking at the equation of a circle. So if we were to rewrite this squaring both sides and calling this radius instead of diameter, instead of, uh, sorry, distance, then we would have uh, X minus H squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. And that's our equation for a circle. That's the general equation for a circle. And this is how we get the center hk and we get, um, we just pick a general point on the circle. So the, the equation for a circle is really just the distance formula and not, not much more to it than that. All right, let's look at the next one, the ellipse. So ellipses have two foci. That's just plural for focus, okay, and there's two of them. And the thing that makes this an ellipse, the definition of an ellipse, is it's the set of points that the distance from the point to one focus plus the distance from that same point to the other focus is equal for all of these. So there's, there's not that the two parts of the blue segments are equal, but the sum of the blue segments plus the sum of the green segments plus the sum of the orange segments are all the same sum. They're all the same thing. And the same thing, if I go from this focus here, that would be one distance, plus this focus here, all the way through to there, that would be the same sum. Just any, any point on the ellipse would have the sum, the same sum of distances from, uh, to each focus. All right. And an ellipse, uh, is just the same idea, only the difference. It's just the difference instead of the sum. So if I take a point on the, on the hyperbola, like this point right here, then the distance from this point to the farther focus minus this point to the nearer focus will be equal to the difference, let's say, if I took this point, and if I took the distance from there to the farther focus, minus the closer focus, I will get the same difference. So it's a constant difference, and that's what makes it, by definition, that's what makes it an ellipse, I mean a hyperbola. Okay, so each of these figures have some pretty cool properties. I, what I, I just wrote down the definitions here. Um, the set of points in a plane, which are the same distance from a point, called the focus, to a line. Um, cool property, objects or light falling parallel to the axis of symmetry will bounce into the focus. And so the property there is what allows us to have satellite dishes. It's what allows us to have headlights. They're all parabolic 
in their general shape. So if you imagine this as a satellite dish and you imagine rays of light coming into the satellite dish, guess where they're all going to bounce? They're going to all bounce, and this is just a property of, of the parabola, they're all going to bounce directly into the focus. If it comes straight down here, it's going to bounce directly into the focus. That's one of the reasons it's called the focus, because all of the all of the light, or it could be sound, will bounce directly into one place. We're going to talk about whispering galleries, and I've been to some, and they're, they're absolutely amazing that you can sit in front of a, par a paraboloid, which is like a three-dimensional parabola, and you put your head or your ears right at the focus, and then somebody else is in another one of these that's like, a hundred feet away and they whisper and they're all of the sound that most of the sound spreads out when you whisper it goes in all directions but the ones that do go that way bounce straight into the focus and, and it's like super amplified it's really weird and I'm going to tell you where you can find some of these uh, whispering galleries where you can check it out yourself all right circles we already know there's nothing uh, there's a lot of amazing things about circles but nothing new ellipses are pretty cool too and actually there's Ellipses can also make whispering galleries. I'm going to talk about that. In fact, that's going to be our application problem at the end here. Um, so if you imagine being at one, I always like to use the analogy of a hockey rink because I, I'm a hockey fan. So if you imagine an elliptical hockey rink with the goalies at the foci, this would not work. And the reason it wouldn't work is because no matter where the goalie hit the puck and bounced it off of the ellipse, it would bounce directly into the other goal. The reason that wouldn't work is because sometimes the last couple minutes of a game, when one team is losing, they pull their goalie. There's With no goalie in, all you would have to do is pass the puck to the other goalie. Like if you're on the team that wants to score again, and the, your, your opposing team pulled their goalie, you just pass the puck to the goalie, and they would just have to find a place where there's no players, and it doesn't matter where, any place, and bounce it off the wall, and it's going to go right into the other goal. That's a property. But this also works for a whispering gallery. So you can also have an elliptical shaped room called an ellipsoid. And if you're sitting at one focus, then this is even better than the paraboloid, that, which is the, uh, like the headlight or the satellite dish, because the whole ceiling can act as a, as a focus. It, it pours all of the energy, all of the, the sound waves bounce off straight into the other focus. So they're pretty amazing, these, um, these whispering galleries. And again, I'm going to show you where, where they are. Unfortunately, the ones that are ellipsoid are hard to find near us. There's a couple of paraboloids. There's one in San Diego, one in San Francisco. But the ellipsoids, you got to go to Washington, D.C. or Chicago or some uh, much farther places to get to those. And um, hyperbolas, the, um, I'm going to save hyperbola properties for the, um, the video. Let's see what I wrote here. For hyperbola cool property of hyperbola objects going through one focus will bounce and that's ellipse sorry objects moving toward the far focus will bounce off of the hyperbola into the nearer focus and i think that's going to show up in a video that i'm going to show you guys uh, in a little bit all right so let's let's focus on ellipses a little bit and uh we'll we'll, we'll focus on the two foci of an ellipse and so in the ellipse with the horizontal major axis there is a fairly easy way to find the focus, and the focus is just, um, if it's horizontal major axis, then the focus will be at um, H plus C, H plus C, comma, K. And we're just going to do a very small amount of math here, not too much, okay? And then or, and the other focus would be at H minus C, comma, K. And if it's a, a vertical major axis, then the focus would be at H, comma, k plus c and h comma k minus c so what well, we know about a and b but we don't know anything about c so i'm just going to tell you without really explaining so much about why this works but the relationship between a b and c is that b squared is equal to a squared minus c squared and just a reminder that an ellipse in general and I'm just going to write it underneath our example here because we're going to need to refer to it anyway. But our, our ellipse in general is x minus h squared over a squared. There's the a that we're talking about right here, the a squared, okay? Plus y minus k squared over b squared. And there's the b that we're talking about right there, 
equals 1. That's our general formula for an ellipse. Okay, so let's look at this problem. Take a minute and read it. Okay, so this problem is about a whispering gallery like we were talking about, and it's ellipsoid, which is a three-dimensional ellipse, and we're going to draw a two-dimensional slice of this room. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take an xy plane, and we're going to uh, we're going to pretty much try to draw this onto the xy plane. So what we're told here is that this uh, this room is a half-shaped ellipsoid that's 47.3 feet long. So the entire length is 47.3 feet, which means the the two ends of the ellipse. This, this would be the major axis, the way that we're going to draw it will each be half of 47.3, which is 23.65. So this distance right here will be 23.65 feet on both sides. And so we are given basically the length of our major axis. And you may remember that the major axis is, um, if it's horizontal, it's going to be 2a. So the number that we were given the 47.3 is 2a, and this is actually a. Okay, this distance is a. So we know a. Okay, we're also told where the foci are. Okay, so there's one focus at 20.3 feet from the center of the room. There's the center of the room, and there's a focus here at 20.3 feet. And then another one here. 20.3. Okay, that's actually going to be the distance from the center to the, um, that's the, the distance from the center to the focus, that's the C. Okay, so this is C. So we have A and C. And if we want to make an equation, we just need B. We need A and B, right? We don't need C for the equation. We're given C, that's where the focus is. Okay, so remember what these look like. We basically know where the focus is. We know where the ends are. We're going to find out how tall the thing is. All right, so we're going to see how high the ceiling is and, and get a general picture. So all we have to do is use this relationship right there. We can uh, uh, associate B with A and C. So B squared is equal to A squared, 23.65 squared, plus B squared, I'm sorry, minus C squared. I'm pointing to it, but I'm not... I'm not saying what I'm pointing to, so 20.3 squared. And when we do that, we end up with uh, 100 and B squared is 147, approximately 147.24 uh, feet squared. Okay, so that's going to give us what we need for the equation. So our equation, we pretty much have it pieced together now. So it's going to... Oh, and by the way, where is the center? the center of this ellipse is going to be 0, 0. So we can just say x squared over a squared, which is 23.65, plus y squared over b squared, which we just found to be 147.24. Let me just check something. One. And you can, you can leave it just like that. Or you can square this, which is about 559.3. So we can write this as um, x squared over 559.3 plus y squared over 147, let's say 0.2, equals 1. There's our equation of the ellipse. Now, if we want the height of the ellipse, um, which is the next thing that asks, this, we found the, uh, and the equation that describes the shape of the room from one end to the other. Uh, and then from the ceiling. So we just want to get that height. So we we would just um, take the b that we've already found, and we have to take the square root of it because we only found b squared. So the square root of 147.24 is 12.1. So this would be about 12.1 feet. So again, b squared is 147.24. So b is approximately 12.1, just taking the square root. Okay, so there's our shape of the room, something like that. And these are the two spots that you would stand and you would hear the, the whisper from a distance away. Okay, I hope you found this helpful.